Well, welcome everybody. I just want you to know, I want you to relax because I'm gonna try to relax. I want you to imagine that you're sitting in my living room after a Poverty 101 training and we're gonna have a discussion. So what we learn at Poverty 101, 201, all the time, people will pull us off to the side and they'll wanna talk about the question that they were a little bit maybe um, afraid to ask in the session or they really hadn't thought it through. And once we're sitting down across from each other, people get a lot more relaxed. And that really is so much more the flow of the way that um, I teach and minister. So I want you to relax as we're talking today and as we're going through. If you've got a piece of paper, write down a thought. Um, we may hit it and answer it um, as we go along. We may not, but I want you to write that down. Think about it. Um, and I'm just so thrilled that you decided to return. <laughs> hey, I mean, I feel like, a, you know, we're special. Well, maybe you're special. I don't know who's special, but I'm enjoying the moment. So, um, you know, we're going to talk today about um, a little bit more about the drama triangle. As we said last week, it is the most requested thing to go further in depth to. And, and I was thinking about that. And I thought, you know, part of it is because deep in all of our hearts, we want to be people who communicate in a way that does not harm, whether it's with our spouse, our kids, um, folks we meet on the street or people coming to us for ministry. We wanna minister in a way that they can receive it. And the drama triangle actually helps us take a glimpse at ourselves first and then allow the Holy Spirit to help us evaluate where we are and what's going on and then move and using those tools outside of that. So since I personally have um, been introduced to the drama triangle, I can tell you that um, my own relationships have improved tremendously. Um, even the way uh, that I talk to residents has significantly improved. And I'm, after four or five years, I'm better able to catch myself when I'm in the drama triangle versus the empowerment triangle. Um, and, you know, especially during COVID, when we're all um, cooped up with a lot of people, I decided that we're going to save your relationships today because you're going to walk away from here. And hopefully during this um, sheltering in place, you're going to practice some of these skills in real time for real. So if you haven't already had conflict, I'm asking God to bring it. No, I'm not. I'm just joking. That was supposed to be laughter. No, I don't have no sound. Okay. So before I go on, I want to. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sure that I thought was really uh, appropriate. Uh, oh, I like somebody's laughing at me in the chat room. Thank you so much. Um, Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> it's out of Romans. And it says, if you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. And if you help, here we go, rescuers. Just don't take over. How did you know the drama triangle was in the Bible? And if you teach, stick to your teaching. And if you give encouragement and guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. Drama triangle. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open, be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. Wow. I, looked at people and I thought, I didn't know that Jesus knew about the drama triangle, but I guess he did. Okay, so I thought that was a perfect scripture. So the other thing, as we're getting ready to move forward and John's gonna give you some more instruction about the drama triangle, is we start thinking, every time we started talking about the drama triangle, what we saw, was that everything that we taught during Poverty 101 was all interconnected. Look at this graphic, it's coming. Well, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. It's coming, we're practicing, but I can talk in between. You know, I used to do TV and they'd always do this about keep going when there's something wasn't working, like you need to stall for time. So that's what we're going to do. I think somebody asked is it, me- Is the new graphic up? No, somebody asked me where the scripture was. It is in, and this is out of the Message Bible, and it's um, chapter 12 of Romans. I started reading at verse 6, 6 through 8. So so there you go, John. You are awesome. I love All right. You. So I want you to look at this graphic. If you look at this graphic, it literally, everything that we taught you 
is in here, right? And what we wanted to say is nothing as we go through these, these springboard chats, nothing is in isolation. Uh, we may talk about something in isolation to go a little bit deeper, but when you start operating everything, all the we all the gears start to turn, right? So when you're dealing with drama triangle, you're also dealing with your biases, your prejudices. You're going to mm -hmm. watch that you don't go into binary thinking. You're going to be mindful of not only your culture and your position of power or non-power. Right? You're going to be looking at all of that. You're going to be looking at your mutual brokenness. So all these things. So right today, we're going to turn the wheel of the drama triangle. But understand, as it works its way out, all these other things come into play as you do that. So I hope as we go, when you look at that graphic, I hope that really conveys to you. You didn't know that we put you through all that. Sometimes in our training, people say you guys are like a fire hose. You come at us and it's like, we don't even give you time to think and you've popped on to the next thing. I want you to know that was intentional because we don't want you sitting <laughs> in our trainings arguing with us in your mind. We want you to have an emotional experience that causes you to think and then move on so that otherwise you'll start debating with us and we'll fall off the train. But now that we're gonna go deeper, we want to hear from you what you think about what we said, how do you think it might apply, um, and, and for you guys who've been in training a long time, I want to know how you have uh, utilized it in your life, how it's changed the way you communicate and engage. So please keep chatting through. We'll talk some about the chats on the side and let's go. Take it away, John. All righty. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. And thank you all for uh, uh, joining us. And I, you know, Peggy, you're happy to be on. I see you got your Poverty 101 book there. Book there. So thanks. That's awesome. Way to go. Oh my <laughs> she came prepared. Sorry she came prepared. Go. Yeah. So we're, um, I, you know, we just, I love, I love this uh, graphic you've got on the screen there of these gears. And I so appreciate how we've come to realize how these things do work together so much. And uh, I hope you guys understand. I, I'd love uh, one person that saw it and they just said one of the things that it helped them see was just how complex building a relationship and doing relational poverty alleviation really is. And, and like Sylvia said, when we twist one, we're twisting the others. So we want you to keep that in mind as we move forward that we're going to talk about drama and we're going to do a deep dive, a deeper dive into the drama triangle tonight. All these other things are happening too. So let's go ahead and um, for Can now, let's... Thing, John? John, can mm -hmm. I say one thing? I yeah. know some of you may be thinking, do the size of the wheels matter? No, it's oh, just good the point. Graph. So we're not realizing yeah. the size. We just, it's just pretty. You know how it's, it's just good looking, okay? <laughs> so don't get caught up in, oh, that's bigger than this. It's not, it's a graphic, right? All right. Yeah. In fact, in fact, we talked about that it's almost variable. Like sometimes the one part of the wheel is going, one wheel is going to feel bigger than another, and then in another engagement, another part is going to feel bigger. And so it's just, again, it's it's kind of probably what you're focusing on that's going to feel bigger. But none is more important than the other. They're all integrated, and when one moves, they all move. And if one stops, they all stop. And so it's just always moving as we do this work. So let's do. Um, if it'll move, okay, there we go. Let's do a quick review on the drama triangle. I don't want to assume, because we've got lots of people that have been with us for a long time, and some of you might have gone through this years ago, and some of you might have been with us three months ago. I think we had one three months ago. I, I don't know how long we've been at this, but uh, so we're gonna do a quick review and uh, and look through, and, and you might, hopefully you're familiar with this. This is the dreaded drama triangle, which we're focusing on tonight. And in the drama triangle, of course, we've got three roles. You could also call those our starting gates. And these roles are, are roles that we play within drama. And some of us play the role of persecutor, some of us play a role of rescuer, and some of us might play the role of victim when we're in drama. And so we, we call them starting gates because all of us have a, a primary way that we jump into drama or that we, we enter into drama. And we usually enter through one of those gates, either as a persecutor or a rescuer or a victim. And if you recall, a victim is somebody who discounts their own value and their ability. They don't see that they necessarily have, they're not believing that they have the power in and of themselves to overcome a situation, or they discount the, their value as a person to do that. So maybe they think they have the skill, but what does it matter? And so they're, they're caught up in that thinking. And a persecutor is someone who discounts the other's value. And 
But when they discount their value, they're really discounting the person. And they're just saying, well, if you can't get it, if you can't get it together, then I'm done with you. It doesn't really matter. And then they're competitive. We tend to be competitive in this. And I should say, I should not say we or they, I should say I. Because if you remember, this is my starting gate when I jump into drama as often as a persecutor. And so when I'm jumping into drama, I'm often going in with a frustration or impatience. And I'm often discounting that person who's playing the role of victim or uh, wanting to wanting to push them away and not help, but mess, but but move them off and say, well, if you can't get it together, then I'm not going to be here to help you. That's me at my worst as a persecutor. Um, and then of course there's the rescuer and and the rescuer they discount the victim's ability, so they care uh, and they might seem friendly and they might seem nice, but they discount the victim's ability to get out of drama, to overcome the situation themselves or through some help being able to do that. And then we see the arrows. So let's not, let's not forget that all of us have a switch. So when we do fall into drama, we're going to fall into that starting gate and then we're going to have a switch. We're going to have a, a, as we go through the interaction, we're going to end up moving from one role to another role if we stay in drama. So I might move from a persecutor and I might be a vindictive or an angry persecutor. And what happens is when a victim starts getting a little angry, I might get angry back and I start playing a role of an angry victim instead of a persecutor and not seeing, and then who knows, maybe if I'm really in, in the sickness of the drama, at some point I might try to start being a rescuer and we just go around and around in the cycle and we're stuck in drama. Right, so that's the way the drama triangle works. We all have that primary primary starting gate we jump into, and then we all have switches. And we're gonna talk some more about that tonight. But for now, what I wanna try to do is hopefully, just like in our Property 101 trainings, I hope you all have identified your primary starting gate. So we've actually got a poll for you that Jody's gonna pop up here. And we're gonna ask you to take this poll to identify your primary starting gate in drama. And I hope, like I said, new tool for us, so we're working on, and she's working on putting that poll up once it's up. Okay, so you've got about 30 seconds to go ahead and um, complete that poll, and it's what do you believe your drama triangle starting gate to be? Okay, we've got lots of people participating. Now remember, if you're struggling to participate or if it's not responding to you clicking on it, hit your escape button real quick. Um, and then once, uh, looks like we've got quite a few. We've got some. I don't know, starting, uh, my starting point depends on who I'm engaging with, says Jennifer. Oh, that's so true, Jennifer. So we're gonna, that'll be a great conversation point. Um, so, you know, pick what you think your primary is. Um, so we got about 86% of the folks that voted. Uh, let's go ahead and close the poll, Jody, and let's uh, pop that up, 89%. Sorry if you weren't able to participate. Um, hopefully it's showing the poll results now. Oh, so. Wow. Um, yeah, so we've got 80% rescuer, 16% persecutor, and 4% victim. All right. Well, my inner persecutor just you know, is wanting to go off at this moment. Oh, this, is <laughs> this is great. Can I ask a question right here? So you know what? We're mm -hmm. just flowing here, right? Jody, can you pop that down now? There we go. Perfect. Thank you. I know we got a comment, that a chat that said, it depends on who I'm engaging with. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a real important thing that we hadn't talked about. So I am curious if that person would give us a little backdrop to what that means, that my starting gate differs um, because um, I'd like to hear why you think it differs based on who you're talking to. You got that, Jody? I'm looking for. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Jennifer. I don't. Got her. Okay, perfect. All right. Are you able to talk, Jen? Can't hear. Can you hear there me she now? Is. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, sure can. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah. So when I attended Poverty 101 and you guys were going over this, it was like enlightenment from God as you were speaking <laughs> this, because um, I first identified as a rescuer, um, and then John started speaking about being how he can be a persecutor, especially with his children. And I was like, oh, wow, I do that too with my kids. Uh, you know, whenever there's, when it's drama and my emotions are engaged, I do the persecutor. And then I went down and started reading the victim. 
And I was like, wow, I play the victim with God. So I'm all three. This is fantastic. <laughs> uh, this is fantastic. <laughs> That's really good. Thank you. I Thank also you. Felt, uh, Todd made a statement. So Todd, in, in regard to what Jennifer just shared, would you mind sharing what you just talked about, what you just chatted? I don't know if I can see the chat. I thought it was a good point. I'm looking for him. Oh, you all have right. to mute him? Oh, okay. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. There he oh, Yep, there he is. Okay, Todd. Howdy. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we, we can. can. Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I... I I mean, I agree with what Jennifer said. I, I, I have played all three roles in, in my life, but I often find that when I step in as a rescuer, I also very rapidly, if not immediately, become a persecutor of the original persecutor. So um, oh. I think it's possible to play two roles almost at the same time. I'm trying to rescue one person and I'm persecuting another. Yeah. And then if I follow that thought f further, I become a victim because now I recognize that I'm stuck in something I don't want to be in. So I think for me, it's really easy to do all th the first two and then all three eventually. So, wow. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Todd. Thank you guys yeah. for sharing. Yeah, that's, that's great. What we want. That's we great. want you guys to be able to, because, you know, all of us are thinking it. We're thinking about, you know, how does that work? And, and I really don't want you guys to think that the drama triangle is static, that there aren't these variations to it that we're all moving through. So just wanted to throw that in. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And and you know what I love about that discussion is really just talking about our switches, right? So it's really, really common as rescuers, and there's a lot of us in this group. When, when we move from being a rescuer, it's very common to move to a persecutor. And in fact, that's part of what happens as a rescuer is, is a victim and a rescuer. It's a relationship that needs a persecutor for the relationship to work. And yes. so we need the persecutor. Otherwise, the foundation of our relationship is it isn't strong. It uh, the strength comes in having a persecutor that we get to vilify together. And so that's where that's and that's where we often talk about the rescuer and the victim relationship being seen as a codependent relationship, and that they're dependent on each other for their their sense of identity. In that, I, as a rescuer, I, I am my needs are met and my needs are satisfied. And even as a victim, I'm actually allowing the rescuer's needs to be met. So I'm satisfying a little bit of my need to be needed. Now this person came along and needs me, and together we have this persecutor that we've created, and it's it's drama, right? That's not healthy in where we want to be as uh, people in relationships. Uh, it looks like Sylvia wants to say something. Well, I did. Well, you know, I just read another comment. I just love it, this little chat sidebar. I love it that you're on the chat today. <laughs> I feel like I'm a boyer. Oh, and that's what they think. Okay, I'm going to repeat it. But um, uh -huh. um, I think it was Daniel who said that he kind of moves to that persecutor mode when he's feeling threatened, right? So if you come in as a rescuer and you feel threatened, he's saying, I move to that persecutor role. You know what I, the other thing we didn't bring, uh, we need to say here is that, we, you know, we introduced you to the feelings wheel. A lot of this is so emotional when it's happening. Yeah. It's not our, it's not yeah. our logic happening. It's our emotion, right? So I love when mm -hmm. Daniel says, "When I feel threatened, then I, then I, then that's when I do the shift, right?" Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. I'm secure mm -hmm. and comfortable, number one, I, I would probably be easier to get out of the drama triangle. But I also probably won't shift to persecutor as quickly if I'm feeling secure. Right, yeah. and we all get threatened by the conversations when we don't know what to do with them. So thank you, Dan, for sharing yeah. that. Well, I, know I think it's really important. That's all right. Let's keep in mind that concept of feeling threatened and the desire to overcome that feeling. So so Sylvia's got something else. You want to comment on what well, Rachel said there? I'm telling you, the chats on the side are just phenomenal. They're uh, great, yes. Chat, Jody, what was that last chat? It was it just went off too quick, but it was great. Oh. Rachel says, I tend to be a persecutor buddy for fear of becoming a victim. Mm -hmm. oh, that Interesting. So weird, weird. I, okay, I like the persecutor buddy. Is that a special phrase? Can we unmute Rachel and see if she yeah. can describe a little bit more what she means yeah, by persecutor buddy? Her. There she is. All right, okay, thanks. Rachel, awesome. you're good to go. I don't think I have, I don't, it's not a special phrase and I definitely don't have it trademarked, but um, it is, <laughs> it's just what was coming to mind. Like, you know, it's like, I tend to, you know, adapt when it's like, I um, start out in rescue mode, usually is my default. And then when someone switches to a persecutor, 
mindset, I can kind of see myself going, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. and then kind of jumping into that um, equation with them. So, Thank you. peer pressure, yeah. I guess, is better to <laughs> call it. Here, I, and I'm just switching something. Um, Julie just pointed out that uh, we have it set, and I've learned how to do this setting. We're um, we're going to show. So now you all should be able to see chats. So just so you know, everybody can see chats now. So now you can chat with everyone. Just be aware of that. They're not only coming to us because Julie was saying she can't see the chats as well because they were just coming to the three of us on the screen here: Sylvia, John, or oh, myself, and Jody. Oh, I'm sorry. But uh, Oh, yeah. Know. So now, now everybody's looking in the windows. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just want you to know, uh -huh. right there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, um, so keep that in mind. What Sylvia was saying about feeling, uh, you know, getting fear and feeling uh, that you, you, you can take some power in this. We're going to talk a little bit about that later and how those things relate. And she's going to share a little bit more and go deeper on that concept. But before we get there. One thing we've noticed over uh, the years of teaching the drama triangle, one of the things that we've seen, particularly um, since many of us in this room identify as rescuers, sometimes we, we make these roles positive or we have ways in which we try to articulate them as positive roles. Um, and, and, and I wanted to think about that language a little bit because, because when we talk about going into drama and entering into the drama triangle and staying in the drama triangle, what we want to be thinking about is what are we telling ourselves? What, what's the tape we're playing or the phrases, the language, the beliefs, those thoughts? Remember that gear, thoughts, feelings, beliefs? Um, when we go back to those gears, what are we telling ourselves that's allowing us to stay in drama? That might be, we might be in the role of persecutor and we might be articulating certain ideas do ourselves it's helping us stay there or we're in the rescue and we're articulating certain ideas so what i want to do is i just um hopefully uh i got um so yeah so what do we tell ourselves to enter into drama and stay in drama through our primary starting gate so we go in there here's just some samples of some phrases that i've heard along the along the way they're just to get you started to think um and we really were hoping for um and we're going to unmute everyone here Hopefully, we had a couple that have feedback, so we'll make sure that if we have to start muting you one on one, it's just because we're trying to find out where that feedback is coming from. But um, we're going to unmute everybody so we can have a little bit of a discussion here. Because what we'd like to talk about is what are some of the other ways that maybe you've thought about these roles in a positive way or phrases that you've told yourself that have helped you stay in, in, in that role. So if I'm a victim, let's say, I might say to myself, I've trusted others and I've gotten hurt and I just can't do that anymore. I'm not gonna go back to trusting others. So I'm gonna stay in that role because I don't wanna trust anybody anymore. Or, or kind of the opposite of that is something we might tell ourselves is, well, I don't wanna be a burden or I don't wanna hurt you. I remember once, and sometimes I tell the story of Chaz in Poverty 101, and he's an older gentleman that uh, looks ju looked, looked just like Jack Palance and was kind of a gruff cowboy like Jack Palance in uh, City Slickers. Anyhow, uh, Chaz, um, we got to know Chaz, and one of the things through these series of relationships that that he he was kind of this gruff, you'd say hi to Chaz, and he'd sit there and he'd look at you and he'd go, uh, he'd grunt. Like just not very friendly at first and took a long time to get to know Chaz. After getting to know him for a long time, what he said was, I've hurt too many people in my life and I don't want to hurt him anymore. And so he was pushing people off because he didn't want to hurt him anymore. So that was what he was telling himself to stay in that victim role because he was isolated and alone and he couldn't move into to being empowered through relationship because he didn't want to hurt people anymore. Um, so that's something a victim might tell themselves. And if I'm a rescuer, maybe it's, well, I'm being a good helper and servant. That's what Christ calls me to do is be a helper and a servant. And so we tell ourselves this as we're caught in drama, or it might be, hey, I'm good at getting people what they want. So I ought to, this is my gifting. I get people what they want. And so if somebody says they need me to do something, I do it for them. And that's my gifting. Um, or, or I feel good when I'm helping. Remember in your documents, the, the drama triangle, when we talk about that language of switch, one of the most difficult things a rescuer fears is the fear of not being needed. They fear not being needed anymore. And that's part of what a rescuer is feeding that, that desire to be needed. And so it helps me feel good and I need to be needed and I don't want to be alone and I don't want to not be needed. So I keep rescuing. Now on the persecutor side, hey, 
I'm really good at getting things done. And so I'm here to help. I'm just going to do it for you or I'm just going to tell you what to do. And maybe what I'll do is, well, here it is. Go do it. And can't do it. That's on you. Um, mm -hmm. I get people to do what they said. I have these skills and I know what's best. Hey, okay, there's some unspoken phrases after that, right? I know what's best. So you should listen to me. I know what's best for you, right? And then uh, if someone doesn't want my advice, they don't need to take it. Right? And that's, so this might be an easy way. Hey, I'm just throwing it out there. If you don't like it, don't take it. But we throw it out there in this kind of indifferent. Um, and, and, and Suzanne, who is on the call now, so I'm really excited about Suzanne being on the call now, actually, because there were some, some, some things today. that. So, hey, Suzanne, glad you're here. Um, you know, she, um, she's our, our, our director at our women's shelter, and she was just pointing out that this last phrase for the persecutor, it's really what happens when a persecutor starts to switch to victim. It's an angry victim that it's like, if someone doesn't want my advice, they don't need to take it. And now it's moving to a little bit of that passive role as a persecutor, but passively aggressive. Like, it's your fault. It's your fault. And I, I'm good. You're bad. So there's that. I'm moving and switching into my victimhood. So if we can try, hopefully we've got some ideas. Um, and let's, uh, let's take a little... See if we can do a discussion here of what are some of the other phrases that maybe you've heard along the way or you even thought yourself that are ways that have helped you stay in drama, ways that you think positively about the role of rescuer or positively even about the role of persecutor. It's hard to say, right? Persecutors, we don't think of them as a positive. But what we want to identify here is do we? Maybe we do. And maybe that's why it's easy for us to, to, to fall into drama and stay there. And so we want to work through identifying that. Do we have anybody that, that might have some additional thoughts they want to share? I think we need to unmute everybody. Oh, okay. You got it? <laughs> want me to do that? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were doing that part. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will. I've unmuted everybody. You are all unmuted. I like that, Sarah. I like that about some people need tough love. Mm. So Carol, just so you know, I, I muted you because I was getting some feedback from your line, Carol. Sorry. Anybody else? We've got <laughs> anyone who share either on chat or uh... yeah, I like that need tough love. We got you pegged, huh? <laughs> All right, so Robert's saying, I'm only a victim when my wife starts home projects and wants me to get involved. <laughs> Robert! Um, Robert, think, we're going to think... help your wife learn how to be a coach, right? So you don't feel like she's making you do it. We want to teach her the language of the coach. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Can I ask a question? Is there any way for the chats to not disappear so quickly? Um, because I can't read them that fast. Um, <laughs> well, you can make it bigger on your screen if you. you there's a little expand in the upper in right. Screen. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. That's why I said if the chat would come slower, we could respond. They're coming <laughs> real fast. <laughs> Well, that's, I can read some. I'll, I've, I've got it big on my screen, so I'll read some. And again, we've unmuted you, so if you unmute yourself, you can say it as well, except for Carol, because I was getting feedback from her line. Um, okay, so we had, uh, uh, let's see here, Merle and Cindy said, um, we've heard that, or we've heard that, Sarah, but uh, didn't think about being persecutors. Great insight. And I think she was referring back to Sarah's comment about um, sometimes people need tough love. Right, that's exactly right. That's one of them. Hey, how about this one? They've made choices. Now they need to suffer the consequences of those choices. Right, that's a, that's a way as a persecutor <laughs> that um, we can justify our persecuting, and and it it moves the emotion. And when we see someone in suffering, right, as you're as you're driving by, maybe you're driving by the the, the men's mission, or you're driving by Seattle, and you see people living on the streets and encampments. Sometimes the easy way to deal with the empathy that you're feeling and you don't want to feel it is to say, well, they made their choices. They made their bed, right? And that's a persecutor phrase that makes it easier for us not to feel those negative emotions you're feeling. A close cousin to that, John, uh, Randy Hack has a good one. He said, I rationalize being a persecutor when I see injustice. Oh, boy. Got All right. Gone. I'm going to have to start. I'm going to have to. Uh, I don't know where that's at. <laughs> we got some music going there. 
let me unmute you, Sylvia. Sorry, I had to mute everybody again. We had some music in the background. So uh, um, you know what? Here what we can do. If you need to say something, go ahead and raise your hand and we'll get you unmuted. Um, we'll try that way. Yeah. Um, and then we and then and then Jody, if you just want to watch that, looks like Randy wants to say something. If you can unmute him. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me find him. Or oh, you know, I'm there. So okay, Randy, go ahead yeah. and unmute yourself and talk. You'll have to unmute yourself, Randy. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Little on we're your gonna, screen, hit the red button. Am I unmuted now? There you, yeah. go. there you go. You got it, Randy. There you go. <laughs> Kind of what's tricky for me is is I jump really super quickly in the, into the role of a persecutor of persecutors, and it's hard for me to not take that role as a kind of a defender of victims. So I tend to persecute the persecutor, and kind of that's a tricky one that I haven't really quite figured out <laughs> the right response. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Sylvia. Well, I want to respond to that. I want to tell you something that. Um, Dr. Beagle told me, I was having lunch with her one day and I talked about um, that whole aspect of just wanting to attack when someone is doing an injustice on the other side. And here's what mm -hmm. she told me, you need to start teaching at that moment and you need to take on, don't take anything personal at that point and say, have you ever thought about and mm -hmm. keep it so mm -hmm. that the conversation keeps flowing. So Randy, that's the way when we see that injustice that we can step back from being a persecutor of the persecutor. I love what you guys are bringing forward. I didn't even think of it that way, but that's what mm -hmm. it is. Because what I really want is to be a conveyor of what I think the Lord is saying about that topic or what I'm feeling about that topic that I think is his will. I don't want to alienate them. I want to somehow mm -hmm. draw them in to a discussion so the Holy Spirit has something to work with in them. So I'm just going to give you that. She gave that to me, and I say that to myself often. You know what? You know, and to other people, have you ever just thought about and in a really non-threatening, non-attacking way? And it's amazing to me how that little phrase takes you out of drama. Because then they can say, well, you know, I never thought about that. Or I've heard that before, but I really don't agree. But at least they've heard from somebody they're willing to listen to, hopefully, another viewpoint. So... I love that. We're going to add that in, the persecutor of the persecutor, because sometimes when we're doing good and helping people who've been marginalized, we do become the persecutor rather than the challenger. So remember, the yeah. other side is yeah. that challenger, which is what Donna yeah. was really saying when she said to ask that question. So thank you. I, I think, I think too, um, I think one of the things about what Donna's saying there in, in asking the questions is also... Um, what what was your what's happening there? I think is what Todd described a little earlier, Randy, in moving from rescuer to persecutor. So you're switching to persecutor. So you're jumping in as a rescuer, and and now you're defending the victim, and attacking the persecutor. And so one of the things that's happening that's what a rescuer often does is it doesn't move to a coach or a challenger and empower the victim to defend themselves. So we're not, we, I mean, we, we're going to hit this, but we're not, um, we decided just as a deeper dive into drama, we wouldn't have a lot of time to move into the empowerment dynamic today. That's, we're going to tease for next time we do this training, we're going to go deeper into the empowerment dynamic. But here's the tease, is when you feel that need to rescue, maybe one of the things doing, remember, is we think that a victim isn't, doesn't have the ability to address this situation themselves, or we're treating them like they don't. Maybe you think they do, but your actions are different than your thought because you're rescuing them and you're defending them instead of going, hey, how can I, maybe how can I help? Or helping them identify ways they can defend themselves or speak to that persecution themselves without you doing it for them. So that's how we move into that coach or, or challenger role. But that's and next we, time. Empowerment. Next time. And we, Jeff made a comment. Yeah. I don't know which Jeff, but it was it, it blinked off really quick. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Um, is yeah, asking more questions. Asking. He said this. He said asking more questions alleviates the need to make statements. People will open up more and tell you more. Absolutely, Jeff. And that's what we're going to cover in the empowerment dynamic is how we use questions to move into the empowerment dynamic. And that's part of what the challenging side and the coaching side is. It's done a lot through positive affirmations and questions. And so we're going to cover that and even give you some 
some a whole list of questions. I hope I'm not over promising, but we've got these tools in our, our bag. So we're going to give you a whole list of questions next time uh, to, to, to help us think about what we call self-discovery questions and equip you to do self-discovery with someone who's in the role a victim and maybe even in the role of persecutor or yourself in the role of rescuer, but but we'll get there. Um, when, I think um, anybody else have any other comments? Yeah, yeah go ahead. There was, there was one more comment from Carol Krauss. She says uh, the rescuer rescuer role reminds her of when helping hurts, of when it does hurt. Yeah, yeah. And gosh, Carol, can you unmute Carol? Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me find her. Oh, there she is. So okay, Carol, Carol, can you expound a little bit more just about that point? Why you feel it's well? My my yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we sure can. Okay. Yeah, my feeling was that if we uh, discount someone's abilities and we feel like we need to um, take over and help them then we're actually also hurting them and keeping them from growing and um and learning and discovering that they have abilities that's yes yeah that's how we're hurting them yeah mm -hmm. yeah excellent thank you one more right. comment from dan campbell um i can now see how the drama triangle works in my own family uh, with my adult <laughs> children, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. hear that a lot of how this helps in family relations, and um, yeah. So let's see. I had a, I had some other. So under the um, under the victim, um, you don't know how much I've tried. So sometimes we might hear a victim say that, and this is a thought that we say to keep ourselves in that role of victim. Is you don't know how much I've tried, and I just don't have enough to try again. And hopefully, for those of you that have been in some of our more recent trainings, you might even hear a little bit of our motivational theory in there. You don't know how much I've tried, so that belief that my effort is going to make a difference. I've tried, and it hasn't worked, and I can't try again, and so that's impacting their motivation to change. So you can see how that gear, the motivation gear, is spinning as we think about that in the drama triangle. Um, yeah. A couple more questions, if you guys mm -hmm. want to hear them. Um, yeah, go ahead. Nancy, great. Nancy, Thank you. you Nancy Brewer says, so is there ever a case when somebody is truly a victim? I would say this, there are truly situations where people are victimized, but I don't believe there's ever a situation where somebody be, can't be encouraged in some way to begin to create the future. Um, so that mm -hmm. doesn't take away from the victimization and their pain, but you know, sometimes uh, we don't believe just because someone's been victimized doesn't mean they can't move forward and that they don't have mm -hmm. dreams and beliefs and strengths and yeah. assets to begin to do that. So, yes, there are true people who are victims. However, we're using that word. We almost need to define that word. But simply because I've been victimized and continue to be victimized doesn't mean someone can't come alongside me to help me walk in a way that creates my future with me yeah. creating my future, not there determining it. So. That would be my comment about yeah. that. And I, th I think it's in the context of relationship. Um, you know, obviously, if you're a victim of a crime and, and you know, you've been a victim of robbery, that's a, a kind of victim. Um, but even there, some of the things that happens with, with the mindset after that is you can get caught up in victimhood now in staying there and, and feeling that powerlessness because of what it does to you emotionally to, to have that happen to you. And what the drama... What we want to do is move out of that to empowerment, right? We want to move that person and help that person move to being a, a, a creator of a different future now. Yeah, I totally agree with that person. Maybe I might lament with them and I might sit with them in sorrow that it happened, that we're experiencing that brokenness. And I want to affirm that they're really feeling that and those feelings are real and those feelings are rightly real, that this is a broken world and nobody should have had to experience what you experienced. Right? So we want to give time and space for that to happen. And then as we've given time and as we build those relationships, now we move to coaching and challenging into that empowerment and saying, tomorrow is coming. What are we going to do about tomorrow? And I don't mean that in a trite way, like just stop whining about yesterday. What are we going to do tomorrow? Right? I really want to stress that you, you want to give people space to feel and that those feelings are real. And, and we want to do that with them and acknowledge that. 
Um, but part of what we do is we move to that creator role. So we'll get to that again. I, I know I keep saying that, um, but we, we only gave ourselves an hour for a conversation. So uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll get there. The um, chats are still coming in, guys. Yeah, Not okay, go. What else do we got? Yeah. Okay, Chi Roth said, difficult with a person who is very anxious and keeps replaying role of the victim. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I think um, when I hear that, uh, it, first of all, yeah, certainly anxiety creates uh, a, a story for somebody and they're set in that story and that anxiety. The other thing that I think of when I hear that also is I think about that motivational theory again as well and that that that, that idea of the reward that's out there. Do they want the reward we're offering? Um, whatever that reward is. And maybe maybe we're trying to think, oh, you know what the reward is, you just need to stop feeling the pain, that you wanna stop feeling pain. Maybe they don't want that reward because they haven't dealt with that pain well. Or the anxiety, there's real things happening in that anxiety that are really real, and we need to help affirm that. And sometimes, in my experience, uh, I've had individuals that have never felt like somebody acknowledged that what they were feeling was real, or that what they were feeling was okay that, you know what, growing up having your dad tell you that you'll never be successful is not okay. And then that resulted in somebody living in anxiety of feeling like they can never be good enough. And so dealing with that, wrestling with them in that, and not, not antagonistically, but with them in that journey is important to give them that space first. And then as we move through that and we, we give them that space to acknowledge it, then we can start to overcome it through some of those self-discovery questions that we're gonna get to next week. So I, I'm gonna stop saying next, not next week, next time. Next I'm gonna stop time. saying next time. Just know that's coming, that if we don't hit it, we're gonna, we're gonna get there. Um, can I speak to that point just a little yeah. bit? Mm -hmm. I just want to mm -hmm. say that um, part of the journey in walking alongside people is for, for us to understand our role and to not allow ourselves to stay in drama. They may choose to stay in drama, but that doesn't mean we have to do the dance with them, right? Yep. It doesn't mean we walk yes. away. So part of this is about our own you know, understanding ourselves and saying, wow, I, I feel like I'm getting ready to go into a persecutor mode because they're not moving mm. forward. They're not doing what's going on. So that's when we step back and say, you know what, Lord, this is your journey with them. This is not something I have to control, control or to manipulate oh, oh, wait a minute. their success <laughs> and accomplishing whatever I want them to accomplish. It's about their journey. And I'm just going to stay yeah. true to what you've spoken to my heart and I'm going to stay there and I'm not going to become the, the, the villain in their story. Um, mm -hmm. Because I do think um, it, it, that's real important because I want to say this, nothing about poverty, relational poverty alleviation is quick. Nothing about it is easy. And there are no silver bullets. They're just tools and our God, right? And so um, I commend people because I mean, you know, I've been at the mission 20 years. I've seen a lot of folks who my heart just broke that they did not seem to me to be moving ahead, accomplishing with everything that we felt or I felt like we had put into their lives. And at some point, I just took the rest and say, Lord, did I contribute to their healing or did I make their trauma greater? And the drama mm -hmm. triangle is about not making the trauma greater as much as we're, you know, human beings who mess up, but really having that desire and that intentionality to do things in a different way so that more healing can come and maybe quicker. So I applaud yeah. you for having it in there for folks that can be frustrating. Because you know what? I was frustrating to my mama growing up. She'll tell you. She told me the <laughs> other day, why did you put me through all that mess? I thought, I don't yeah. know, mom. I don't know. Uh, but I did, right? I put my mother through tremendous stress with my behavior, with all of the wonderful upbringing that I had. So just remember, she didn't know I was going to turn out to be wonderful and charming and, you know, talking okay. to you guys like okay. that. Okay, okay, so, so, <laughs> right. so Sylvia, there is a comment here that I think transitions wonderfully into the next part. You use the word, but I just want to share this comment because I, I think it speaks to the common themes between the roles, which is hopefully that you guys can see that on your screens, right? That slide, common theme between the roles. Okay, so the comment is, if I'm being honest, when rescue, when I'm in a rescuer, it is not about the person I perceive as a victim. It is me rescuing myself from something in my past. 
So that's some deep work and really thinking about. It's a beautiful comment. And, and I think it speaks so well to the common theme between the roles, which Sylvia was going to talk about. And I'm just going to, I'm going to make it this big slide here so you can see it. It's not really to talk about, you know, it's my favorite word. I wish I knew how to dance like Janet, right? Um, control. <laughs> this is my theory about this, that whenever we're in drama, it's because we're trying to control. Even as a victim, mm. I'm trying to control the way you see me so that you will do whatever it is I need for you to do the way I want you to do it by staying in victimhood. I'm staying there and I'm justified. Rescuers too, right? I don't know how many times I've heard people tell me they're rescued with joy in their voices. Oh, I'm a rescuer. And I'm like, okay, you must not understand what that is. And persecutors, of course, we always think we're right. But a part of that, when I'm in my persecutor mode, it's because I'm controlling, I'm trying to control what's going on. And here's the false belief that we say, if I'm not in control, bad things will happen. Mm -hmm. If I'm working with somebody to rescue and they're not changing, wow. If I controlled a little bit more because I really have all the skill set and I'm gonna do for them, I'm gonna determine what they can't do for them. I, sometimes I'm not even gonna ask them. It's about control. So you know what, I love being a Christian because the Lord has this wonderful phrase in his word that says, could you cast all your cares, my direction? Huh, but what I really care about this person, I feel like he's saying to us today, can you cast it? Can you cast it? Mm -hmm. Can you find a new way of communicating and moving through? And would you relinquish control? Because I've got your heart and I've got their heart and their journey. And I brought you two together to do that journey. So could you release some control. So this week, as you begin to have dialogue in relationships, here's what I want you to know. You've been equipped more today than you were yesterday. And walk in this until we meet again. And let's hear how just being more aware and mindful of the dynamics of the drama triangle, how many times you were able to step outside of it or at least just recognize it, even if you didn't escape. Because sometimes, Jody and I talk about this all the time, sometimes you just don't escape. It's just too much. Right now I'm gonna go here, but go there knowingly. Go there knowingly so that next time you can step out knowingly. I think it's 5.30. You guys, I love you guys. I love chat. I wanna <laughs> chat every week because you're so awesome. And you know what, here's the other thing I wanna tell you. We believe in mutual learning. I have learned so much today about how to look yeah. at the drama triangle through your comments and questions. So praise God, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, we've, got, we've got more that we didn't show you today, which tells you how much we just loved your feedback. Um, and it just makes, we actually had a case statement of a specific question someone's asking. We're not gonna jump into that because you know what, that would be easy for us to go, let's get together for a half an hour and talk through this question together. And we don't even talk deeply about other topics. We can just address a question. So we we are really having a lot of fun doing this. And we're going to figure out how to get a tool that gives us more people on the screen so we can see <laughs> more of you. She's she's pointing to Denzel and just, you know, that's hey, Denzel. Denzel. Bro, you guys don't Denzel. know that's Denzel. And he, he loves me. And so he follows me everywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Denzel or Russell? It's Denzel. It's Denzel. Denzel. Yeah, so... We um we want to look like well, maybe his maybe his screen was a little dirty. <laughs> Wipe your screen off, Jeff. Wipe your screen off. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Our next one that we've got planned is to is to dive into the empowerment dynamics. So how do we take what we've learned from the drama triangle? And how do we then move more into the empowerment dynamic? Uh, and 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 we've already addressed a little bit. A lot of questions is one of the ways that you do that. Uh, and then you know don't rescue, don't persecute. But but there's questions we ask to help us do that. And like I said, we're going to figure this tool out to help us see more of you because this is a lot of fun seeing you all. And uh, um, thank you for your comments. Uh, thank you for your feedback. We actually once we once we close or once you close out a little. A uh, review is going to pop up, and because this is a new format for us, we'd love your feedback on the format. 
um, and on the content and the discussion time. We, we haven't, uh, we'd love to hear how much we talked versus how much you talked and just give us some of those things. If you need to talk more, let us know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so, I love it. Thanks, Daniel. Boom, shakalaka. Okay. All righty. Well, I think we are all good. Um, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and close out and say goodbye to you all. So please have a wonderful week. Um, have a good two weeks, whatever. Take care, stay healthy, uh, and God bless in your efforts to not fall into drama. Stay out of drama. Bye. Stay out of drama. Bye-bye.